Hi, this is Chris Massiello of VitaminCM.com, and today we're going to talk about using the VLOOKUP function in Microsoft Excel. What VLOOKUP is used for is to find a value and see whether it exists in another range of values. So I have a list of people here that paid for an event. So all the people that paid are here, and this is the amount each of them paid. Then on this side, I have a list of the people that attended. So not all the people that attended have paid. So I need to find out which people paid and which people didn't by looking up people on the list of people who paid. So before you start to do a VLOOKUP, the best thing to do is create a named range. A named range just grabs a block of cells and puts a name on it and allows you to reference it in other places in the workbook. So we want to name this range of people that already paid. And one of the things I like to do, if I'm going to keep adding to this, I like to give myself a little extra space. So I'm going to drag it down and leave a few extra rows here. Now I'll right click and select name a range. And I'll name this range paid. Okay, so now I can reference that range of cells anywhere in this work. Now I want to use the VLOOKUP formula. So I'm going to click in the cell next to this first person's name. I want to see if she is part of this group. Now obviously I can see it here because it's a small list, but when you have potentially thousands of items in your list, it gets a lot more tricky to figure that out. So I'll click in the cell next to this person's name and I'll click the insert function button here and I need to use a lookup function. I can search, so I'll type VLOOKUP. And there's VLOOKUP, there's LOOKUP, HLOOKUP. HLOOKUP does the same thing. Instead of going up and down columns, it goes left to right across rows. So I'll select VLOOKUP. And what it does, the first thing it says is it explains what the function does. So it looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table over here and then returns a value in the same row for a column you specify. And then you notice as you click in each of these fields here to build this function, it gives you an explanation of what each of them do. So there's four fields that you need to use here. The first one is the lookup value. So what are you looking for? We want to look up this person, this, this record, so cell D2, the table array. I could either drag a range of cells or I could use my named range, which works a lot better with VLOOKUP. So I'll type in paid. You notice as I type in paid, it shows me the list of values that th that, that range contains. So this is where I'm going to look. I'm going to check for this value and see if it's in this range. Then column index number. This is the column number in the table that I want to return. So I have a range that's two columns wide. If I want to, if I find a match for this Mary, which is here, do I want to return the value in column one, which is the name, or in column two, which is the amount? And for this activity, I want to do her name and then range lookup. Range lookup, there's two options, true or false. False means it has to be an exact match. True means the closest match. Most of the time, uh, you will not want to use true. You'll want an exact match, so we use false. And we're ready to go, so I'll hit OK. So it looked for this value in this list. It found the value right here, and then it returned the data that was in the first column of the range, which is the name. If I go back here and I open the function editor again and I say, no, I don't want the name, I want the amount, so I'll change it to the second column. Notice that the amount pulls up. So I'm going to change that back to the first column. And now I can just drag it all the way down my range and it will look up everybody. So as it goes down, it gives me the name when it finds people. Now when it finds someone that's not in the list, so Mike, if we look here, there's no Mike in the list. It gives me an error sign, pound NA. Same with Chris, same with Becky. So these are the people who have not paid yet and we need to collect from. Now the cool thing about it is if I go back and I add into the empty cells that I specified as part of the range, so if I put in Chris and hit enter, You'll notice it reruns the formula, the function, and it says, yes, he is in the list. And if I put an amount here and I change the column number to two, it would return that value. So that's how we would work with the VLOOKUP. 
Now, there's one more extra thing you can do to clean it up and make it a little nicer. If you notice, you get these pound NA symbols returned, and there's a, a thing you can do. You can take the VLOOKUP formula and nest it inside of another formula to make it look a little more attractive. So I'm going to copy this exact formula out of here. So VLOOKUP equals, etc. So I'm going to use the if error function here, and the if error function returns a value if there's an error in the expression. Otherwise, if there's not an error, it returns it. So what I'll do is I'll paste the VLOOKUP formula in here, and then if, the, if there's an error, meaning if the person doesn't exist, I want to type the words collect so that I know we need to collect from them. So it runs again, and it looks the same because Mary was found, but if I copy it the rest of the way down, you'll notice the people that did not exist in the list have the words collect next to them. So it makes it a little cleaner instead of that pound NA. So that's how you use the VLOOKUP to compare values in two separate lists and check whether they exist or they don't, and then return values based on some logic that you set up.